Hello Travelers, Jay here, and today we're going to be covering my Static Orb Sorcerer and how I've built it and played it. I haven't changed it too much. I originally got the idea from Foe, who did a forum post. Um, the reason I haven't changed it too much from how he built it is really just that Sorcerer is a kind of solved class. There's only so many ways you can realistically build it and tweak it and change the skills. So, there really isn't a whole lot to say about a lot of it. It's very standard for a lightning sorcerer, but I've got some kind of interesting gearing options. There's lots of different ways to build it, and Static Orb specifically scales really well with gear. So, we'll talk about that a little bit. First, I just want to like show off kind of how much damage we can do on the target dummy and whatnot. This is basically the full tank version of the build and we, as you can see, quite easily getting up to like 150, 140k. Is there even some 190s in there? It's like, it's hard to tell. Definitely 160 like on the dummy, right? So, going basically full tank this character still hits extremely hard with with lightning blast which is your single target skill and stack orb doesn't hit quite as hard but with all the shred and you can't really see very well but stack orb shotguns and hits multiple times because of all the small orbs so we're hitting for like probably close to 200k every time once we have shred and like uh, shock kind of stacked up on the dummy right so it hits extremely hard and this character has like close to 100k effective HP due to the gearing options I've chosen now if you're looking at the gear it looks a little scary I'm gonna cover the gear first for this build just because like it looks quite intense so I've got ravenous voids which is the big thing now you can definitely use, and I would actually probably recommend to newer players just to use a random pair of gloves like this, like these engraved gauntlets. The the shred is low, but these are like perfect. It's got car speed, it's got int. You could also swap it out for crit chance if you need crit, hybrid health, and then armor shred. And that would that would be fine. In fact, you would actually then be able to cap your endurance. I need to shift some gear around a little bit. So Ravenous Void are not required at all. It's just one of those things. If you want to absolutely push this build to the limit, play with Ravenous Void because you will be nigh unkillable <laughs> against most things. It's the same with Prism Wraps. Mine are legendary. They have percent increased health. You don't need that. You can you could run with just a random pair of prism wraps with with no legendary potential whatsoever. It's really just here for the leech and the reduced damage taken because we're using Twisted Heart, which has quickly become one of my favorite items in the game. It's got the plus one to elemental skills, static orb and lightning blast are both elemental skills. In fact, so is flame ward, and I think even teleport. No, not teleport. Never mind. <laughs> just flame ward. <laughs> Um, so it, every time we cast a elemental elemental skill, so lightning blast or static orb, a percentage of our health is converted to ward, and that's where prison wraps comes in. Prison wraps, we get the leech on crit, so our health instantly goes back up, and that's what allows us to get such absurd levels of ward against bosses. We can quite consistently get up to around the 4k mark on like Jura, Shade, and Mo uh, Monolith bosses. So we get extremely tanky. Uh, there's, there'll be some boss clips at the end of the video. I do quite a dangerous uh, zombie dragon. Um, he didn't have much HP, but he had quite a few increased damage mods, and I tanked every single one of his blasts, and it barely even got through the ward if it did. Now, most of my gear is exalted as well, which again looks a little scary, but like this is just health. That's got mana regen. This is probably the best piece of gear, but it's not even that well rolled. Um this is exalted crit multi, and again it's not even well rolled. I'm really just using this for the implicit spell crit and the mana so I can hit the three hundred mana breakpoint. Um I needed to run a bone amulet because I need the res, I needed a bit of spell crit, and I needed a way of getting armor shred because it's so much damage because of the way it's static orb shotguns. This helmet right here is completely unnecessary, but it is the reason why I made the build. I dropped this helmet, and 
I was like, okay, I need to do something with this, right? <laughs> it's the one of the only double T6 items I've ever dropped that was usable. So it's got almost a hundred and uh, hundred ninety percent. Nope, that's not right, is it? Almost a hundred and sixty percent increased spell damage. Uh, maths is not my strong point. Along with the plus three to level of lightning blast and the plus three to level of stack orb. Now, now that we've looked over the gear a little bit. I'll just say you can totally play this with full res. I have done it in SSF. It's totally viable. In fact, in some ways, it will it, it should do more damage if you're decked out in full res. Um, there'll be links in the description for planners with optimized gearing uh, options. One that I'll do one for uh, no res. I mean, no unique. Sorry, no res. You want res? No uniques. I'll do my current gear, this one, and uh, which is also like the defensive option, and then I will do a fully like a big DPS one using like um, uh, what are the gloves called? Jura, the Jura gloves. Here we go. These Jura's Obsession. The adaptive spell damage is really good if you can hit car speed on them. And then I will link one of Foe's planners, which is just um, his wish list for every piece of gear he wants. Again, Fogue came up with this build. Um, I've just played it a lot. <laughs> and yet, still probably not as much as him. He did give me permission to make this video. And he has pushed this build to wave 1,000 in Arena. And up to 1,000 Corruption. He's done that with both Static Orb and Elemental Nova. So I feel pretty confident in saying that this is probably, at the moment, the best Sorcerer build in the game by quite a bit. Alright, so first up we've got Lightning Blast. Now this is a very standard Lightning Blast tree. If you've never played a Sorcerer before, the nodes to prioritize are Hypercharge for the quadruple cast chance, Convergence for the big single target. This makes it so your Lightning, uh, your lightning Blast can only chain to one target, so on bosses you'll be hitting them multiple times, and the quadruple cast chance obviously just Quadruple damage, essentially. Um, the next one is Shatter Shock, because we're chilling and shocking like all the time with this build, so it's very easy to get the maximum bonus from this. And the next node is Front Loaded. Now, if you only have a level 1, I mean a level 20 Lightning Blast, sorry, then you only put one point here. Any extra points, dump into Front Loaded. Uh, next up, we've got Flame Ward. Again, if you've never played the Sorcerer before, this is an extremely standard Flame Ward tree. There's really only one way to build it. We've got the Cast Flame Ward when stunned, the extra charge, all the less damage taken. So we're taking we're taking 70% less elemental damage from hits. That is not from dots um, when we have Flame Ward up. We also get 100% increased damage for lightning because of lightning ward. This should be probably the last node you take because you won't really be using flame ward to juice your damage in the early game. Next, obviously, our main clear skill, static orb. The nodes to prioritize here. This is a little this is a little tricky. So you want to get scatter blast early on as possible for the small orbs, which are the ones that when you hit the target, they explode, that's where you get the shotgun. Uh, then you want to get Static Armor for the Lightning Aegis. This is just another defensive layer where Lightning Aegis gives you 25% less damage taken. So every single time we cast it, you see down here, we get Lightning Aegis. And I didn't mention it in the gearing, but this is... Uh, so because we're running Lightning Aegis all the time, we get the full bonus of our idols, which are increased Lightning Damage while you have Lightning Aegis. And the double lightning damage if over 300 max mana. We have four of those. Mine aren't particularly well rolled, but it's just another one of those things that the more you play the build, the better you, the better gear you'll get for it, and it will scale really, really well. <laughs> now the crit multi, it's just you know crit multi more damage <laughs> when you crit. <laughs> Excuse me, um, hiccups. <laughs> uh, spell damage to shocked enemies. These are the nodes I take last. And for monoliths, I would probably recommend taking the minus mana cost because you don't need the knockback. Um, so 
the minus six is just quite nice because this build can feel a little clunky. And teleport. So teleport. This is a slightly weird way of building it. We've gone for the copies, the mirror, the mirror images. They're just like kind of there to bait enemies a little bit. They're, you know, just kind of help get all the heat off you while fighting bosses. And in monos, they're they're pretty good meat shields, even though we are obviously very tanky. So we've got all the res. Although, uh, we have only got four points here, but we don't need the fire and lightning res. Uh, we got the stat buff duration, so we have eight seconds on our on our teleport buffs. That's the res and the armor. So, as you can see, when it, when it drops, there we go. I'm not res capped, but then I teleport. My armor shoots up to a thousand, and my lightning and cold res are capped. There's a couple of different ways you could build this if you want. You could drop the uh, the copies, you could drop the increased LE damage because you really don't need that. And you could go for the stun immunity, but then you would have to build Flame Ward slightly differently. But I, I recommend this setup. This is the one that Foe showed me and I, I do really like the, the mirror images, especially for like arena echoes and stuff. Just when you're getting, when you're getting rushed a lot, they, they really do soak up a lot of the damage. And lastly, focus. Now, there's some things to mention about focus. This is the standard monolith way to run it. This is how I run it on all my sorcerers that I don't intend to ever play arena in. But if you're going to play arena, you probably want to drop the nodes here and switch over to this one. The man, uh, Go for the full mana gained while negative. So you drop all five points here and potentially probably even that point I would say and you go one here and then the four points here so that when you drop below maximum mana what you'll be doing is you'll be casting you know it takes a while because it doesn't cost that much and we do have a lot of mana and you get negative you teleport and then you would focus and then you would instantly have a burst that like basically fills your mana and that's what you do in arena it feels a lot comfier that way let's take a look at the passives again I'm only gonna glance over this because it's it's all in the description this is very standard mage passives you know we got, we got some health we got some some damage <laughs> res all the car speed big crit and crit multi get the Ellie res in spell blade and then this is just about as generic as it gets for a lightning sorcerer tree. It's this is kind of one of the bad things about sorcerer is there's really only three ways of building it. You either go lightning damage, cold damage, or fire damage, <laughs> and then you know all the nodes up here like the adaptive spell damage. You know value tripled if you had 200 maximum mana. That plays into the kind of class that you're, you know, stacking stacking mana as much as possible. And here you have the cooldown that like obviously affects your teleport, your flame ward, makes it feel pretty good. More adaptive spell damage, some mana regen. It's it really is just damage, damage everywhere. You know, there's not a whole lot more to it really. There is some Ellie res if you're hardcore. You might want to spec into this node to get a little bit more resistance and stun chance. But honestly, it should be fine along with teleport, or you can just run a little bit more resistance on gear. But yeah, sorcerer very solved class. There's this is the way to build a lightning sorcerer. All right, to go over the pros and cons of this build and lightning sorcerer in general, it's extremely, extremely tanky. You know, we've got close to 100k effective HP. Uh, more with flame ward up. We have more damage than we really know what to do with for the content in the game. All the all the footage in this video was at 300 corruption and it's very mobile. I really enjoy teleport. Teleport feels very nice, especially if you've been playing things like Rogue and uh, Sentinel, which, you know, shift and lunge, they feel pretty good, but teleport, oh, it's really really nice. And it's extremely flexible for gear. You can go full damage, full tank, hybrid, and it scales really well. For cons, it can be squishy early on. Before you get things like Twisted Heart and Prism Wraps, and even just a leveled up and have a good amount of HP, it can feel a little squishy. So 
I know I said a pro is it's tanky, but a con is at low gear levels it's squishy. And it can feel a little clunky. I only have 17 mana regen. If you can get this up to around 22 to 25, you won't ever have to press focus. And it feels great. Any other cons? I think maybe just that Sorcerer is quite a solved class and that there's really not many ways to innovate it. Well, that's about it really. There isn't a whole lot else to say. Uh, this is uh, Stack Orb Sorcerer. Like I said, it's not me who came up with the build, it was Foe originally, he's the one who's played it to the really high competitive levels. Uh, thank, thank you again Foe for giving me permission to make a video on it. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, I hope you guys try it, and I hope you're excited for the new patch. I'll be streaming it over on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash jtheproduct. I'll be, uh, I'll be live almost every day. The only days I definitely don't stream are Mondays. So yeah, I'll see you then. Catch you later, guys.